Welcome to the Look Good, Move Well podcast. What are we bantering about today, Satya? I came up with the last one, so it's your turn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, well, let's see. What is the craziest New Year's Eve celebration that you've ever experienced? Mm. Most wild. I don't remember all the details. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually really not much of a partier. I'm like a super, super homebody. And mm-hmm. there were a few years where for New Year's Eve, I would definitely like get a little actually Halloween was more like my crazy time. Oh yeah. That was like one that I went all out for New Year's Eve. I always felt like, um, okay, this is going to make me sound like a big nerd, but I felt like New Year's Eve was not the one to go and party necessarily. It was the one to like be at home sort of in like a quiet contemplation. I did a lot of like, spiritual retreats that happen to like take place over Christmas and New Year's and so that was that's always a time I actually associate with like being on silent retreat like in a place where there's snow and everything's super quiet and you're just like Mm -hmm. totally internally contemplating your new year hmm okay all right yeah not not super wild parties unfortunately but no but that that's a good that might be a good lead into our our topic maybe our topic but uh, but I obviously want to hear yours (laughs) <laughs> before we go into yeah, our <laughs> okay okay <laughs> yes um yeah i i i what's what's interesting is that my preference would be to lay low on a new year's eve yeah. um but i had a brother that was closer in age that really subscribed to the if it's not like a mega mega party if I don't hit the mega New Year's Eve party, then I, I'm a, I suck, you mm. know? So he was always on the mission to find it. Mm. And, uh, there was kind of like a, there was like a two or three year period from like right, at, right after college or maybe my last year of college to like before I went to medical school where I was just sort of, oh, I'm going where you're going. You know, I was hanging out with him a lot. So I remember being at a, like, I don't even know where we were in San Francisco, but some like overly produced party for New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, you know, we were like, whatever. I don't know. I got all like put way too much time and thought into what I was wearing. Oh, yeah. There was a button up shirt that had some stupid stripes Mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were drinking, you know, cocktails that were like 20 plus dollars each. It was just obscene. And uh, yeah, those were like my quote unquote crazy uh, New Year's Eve's that I wish I could take back. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) were not that great. Actually, they were terrible. They were really not fun. It was like after at a certain point, I was like, okay. I've circled the place. I've had the drinks. I'm back talking to the same two friends over here. Why the hell are we paying all this money to do like this? Like we could be at we home on our totally, couch right now. <laughs> yeah, like drinking out of a flask. I don't even know. Like yeah. if, if that's the thing we want to do. Yep. Um, and the music was always too loud. And you couldn't talk to anybody. So yeah, that was yeah. thankfully um, I got out of that and just couple of years later found found a partner that just wanted to lay low and mm-hmm. didn't really like to go to parties and the rest is history yeah. yeah yeah but it does bring up that thing of like how you start the new year how you choose to start the new year does kind of feel like a pivotal moment in setting the tone for the rest of your year don't you think I mean, I think that's what people believe. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like, and they believe that starting it with this big bang of like a, a massive celebration yeah. is uh that's what's going to get them off on the right foot. And I'm, I mean, if that's how you get your, you know, excitement and your kicks, like go for it. I'm not, I'm not against it, but I just don't believe that you have to just buy into that portrayal of like the new year celebration. Um, And if you, if you find yourself being more uh, drawn to sort of like, solitude or a quiet night with some friends and you know then that can be extremely meaningful and 
you know, a lot of people are looking to embark on something that feels new or feels like a change. And it's like great to great place to start that when you're like, when you have all your senses about you Mm -hmm. and you're not just like, you know, numbing those senses with, uh, you know, a bunch of stimulus that's out there. And, and again, nothing against going out for a big party. Like if I could transport to like Times Square and do like the big Times Square, you know, ball drop, New Year's celebration, just to like have that, like check that box. And I would love that. would be super fun. Yeah, I've have never a fun done, experience. Yeah. I've never done the, the big one either. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's just not my, you know, it's not my, not going to be my everyday. Yeah. But what it brings up is that what are we even celebrating? Are we celebrating the fact that we get a chance to start over fresh, like wipe the slate clean? You know, are we celebrating the achievements or like making it through the year what does New Year's mean for you in that respect? Hmm. I don't know that I've thought about that. Um, I think I, I like what you said, the first option, which is like, we just, we have a chance to sort of start, start over something. You know, there's, there's, it's, it's, there's a cultural, I mean, it's all built around, you know, the culture of New Year's being this time to start start fresh. I mean, there's, um, I don't know if there's anything in the, you know, actual f- physical universe in the seasons that, like, changes in our bodies or changes in our, our environment. But um, we certainly believe that, like, hey, just around this time, there's going to be a different, there's going to be something different. There's an opportunity for something to be different. And now's our chance, you know, to make something different, Mm -hmm. which I think is good. And it also puts a tremendous amount of pressure on people to like, if you don't get this right, you know, you're a failure. Until the next one. (laughs) Yeah. Until like, yeah, you've got one shot at making this right and getting on the right diet plan and changing your body finally. And if, you know, January 15th comes around and you're already off off track then we'll just wait till 2023 mm-hmm. yeah it'll come around again it will yeah what's what's the yeah for you what's the celebration or what are you celebrating yeah well for me I think it's a really great opportunity to take stock of where you've come from and take that information in to inform where you want to go mm-hmm. and that's something that we do on many levels and it's something I just finished doing for work where I put together the 2022 marketing memo of all the ways that marketing is going to push our projects forward in the new year. And it was a really great opportunity to look back at all the projects that we worked on in 2021 and actually take a second and be like, okay, here's where we started. Here's where we ended up. And wow, look at what we accomplished together. And okay, that looks cool and that looks like there's an opportunity there and take all that in and 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 move things forward with that knowledge in mind and I feel like I do that on a personal level as well it's a good opportunity for me to reflect on what things have really become important to me over the year what has changed what seeds are starting to sprout that I might want to nurture going forward in the months to come Mm. well do you have um What are some of like the, um, if you had to be, if if I had, if you had to come up with an answer to this question, you know, I, do you see people making mistakes in how they're approaching or what is like a, a common, uh, mentality that people bring into the new year that you think sets them up for, you know, less than ideal outcomes or failure? Yeah. Well, I think that a lot of people obviously try to renew their relationship with fitness and nutrition in the new year. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we're here to talk about today. But I think that I want to, first of all, acknowledge that there is something that is really, really positive about the feeling that you get to start fresh. And there is an opportunity for momentum and for 
that extra jolt of energy that can really start to push forward a new habit or a new way of looking th- at things that maybe has been difficult for you in the past. Mm-hmm. And so I want to say that first because I don't want anything in this conversation to discourage anyone from using that opportunity uh, yeah. because it's going to be so powerful culturally and, and in all the ways that we're going to sense it together. So, um, or as this episode will probably come out after that we've just sensed together. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's important to acknowledge, but one thing that I think that people can maybe take a wrong turn on is that they get really focused on a behavior that they're trying to make consistent and then set them up for, set themselves up for failure if they don't do it like that. Yeah. So for example, You know, someone could say, like, I'm going to train, you know, five times a week, every single week. Mm -hmm. And then the first time that something comes up and an obstacle is thrown your way and you can't adjust in time. Oh, I failed on my New Year's resolution. Sure. It's all over. Yeah. Yeah, I think. And I I think that um, (laughs) I think when people are setting out to make their New Year's health and fitness and nutrition resolutions um there's i don't know if it's i think it's informed by the health and fitness culture around them marketing media but they just really am they over ambitious Mm -hmm. or they but or they're led to believe that without an ambitious goal you won't get to the more realistic goal that you have yeah it's like i know i'm not going to do it a hundred percent. So I'm going to shoot for the moon. And if I get there 50% of the way, I'll be secretly, I'll be kind of excited about that. Yep. But that's really problematic because the moment you start to fail at something, you know, you don't just like cut back 50%, like many, many people just go back to zero. Yeah. And if you're like, I'm going to, I want to snatch 400 pounds but I really only want to snatch 200 pounds. So I'm going to get there. If I just shoot for the heavy, heavy program, it's like once the heavy, heavy program gets hard and you just fall off completely. And now you're not, you're not lifting weights at all. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a big reason why we have, you know, we launched the, the protein challenge, the practical protein challenge of 2022, which is not, I'm not, telling you to count every single macro i'm not telling you to measure and weigh every single piece of food that goes into your body it's hey use our our guide figure out how many grams of protein you should be having a day that's your only goal get those grams of protein in and here are all the ways you can do it and if you're really well if you I mean depending on your experience you might opt for just getting in a moderate to low amount of protein each day which is still above what most people are having and that can make a huge difference don't worry about cutting out all the sugar and cutting out alcohol every single week and you know skipping family night out for pizza like that's not the goal the goal is to just add these things in Mm -hmm. and that's it and that's the challenge so it's like how do we how do we get people focused on creating very attainable goals yeah because what happens when you nail an attainable goal you get motivated to do something more. You get confident that you can do it. Totally. Yeah. And confidence is so, so effective when it comes to like progressing in your health and fitness. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, I'm going to drink this one bottle of water every single day. Yeah. Whoa, I did that. That, was, that wasn't that hard. I'm going to add in, you know, 20 grams of protein, 30 grams of protein at breakfast every day. I don't care. It's have a shake. Oh, I'm drinking a shake, getting my water, my protein in. I did it every day this month. Well, I, I can do something else. Like, no big deal. Um, and I would say that if you're going to be, you know, if you're trying to set some intentions for, like, what you're going to focus your health and fitness energy around, um, focus on things that you can add in and, and focus less on things that you have to take out. Yeah. Um, because we talked about this on the last podcast, but it's like when you add something in and that thing that you're adding in, we know has inherent health benefits to it. It can often just work to take the place of the thing that you want to get rid of anyway. So it's like you add in more protein each day. You're naturally going to have fewer cravings and less desire to eat a bunch of cookies. It's just going to happen. 
you might have two cookies instead of six cookies because you got protein for breakfast and now you're feeling satiated and you don't feel the need to have so many. And then after a month of doing that consistently, you're like, I don't, I don't even really, I haven't been eating cookies, so I don't need to restrict myself. I don't need to deprive myself. It's just not been on my mind. Um, so those would be some areas, I think, to kind of start and focus on additional things in your life. I am definitely a big fan of the low bar goal. And in fact, there's this researcher, writer, BJ Fogg, who's done a lot of work on habits. Mm. And he has said often that he started a habit of, I'm going to floss one tooth. That's Mm -hmm. it. And that's so attainable. And when you're there with the floss in your mouth, obviously, you're probably going to do more than one. But one is good. You can't do that. So... Um, I think that that's really powerful and I love the add-on mentality. And the reason for that is that it starts to shift the framework of I'm going to change my life in this way by fixing all the stuff that's wrong with me Mm -hmm. (laughs) and turn that into I'm going to add more of the things that help me become the person that I want to become. Yeah. Do you have something that you already have in mind that you're going to, you want to add in come Jan 1? Well, I haven't really clarified my New Year's resolutions goals yet. Mm -hmm. So this is very on the spot. But two things that have come into my life recently that I want to encourage more of within myself. Mm -hmm. One is that I am going to try really hard to take a full day off every weekend. And Mm -hmm. that's been really tough for me. So working on my work-life balance. But the thing that I want to add into that, that I want to make room for, is that I'm really rediscovering my love for dance. And so that's been really, really fun to have going on in the background of my life. And by taking that day to step away from my computer, it will allow me more time for some fun movement and hopefully that can also weave in more throughout my week. That's rad. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, maybe make that day off on the weekend, the day to come up to the Philly compound for a workout Saturday mornings, Saturday morning. (laughs) Although now I'm training my son on Saturday. I know maybe he can, maybe he can come with me. I like that. I like that idea. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, um, I haven't, yeah, I haven't made my resolutions concrete either. Um, but something that has definitely been swirling around, there's two two things really. The first is that I've um, been wanting to get, I talked to Nate about this, the, the daily connection to earth, nature, mm-hmm. grounding. Grounding. Grounding and sun exposure every day, even though it's winter. Just like my man, the liver king, oh, Brian yeah. Johnson. Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, something I want to do. and um, But the other one is a little less quantifiable. And I don't really know yet how I'm going to do this. But i um, been paying attention. I've found myself being more aware of like just sort of like the this subtle – it's like a, it's this habit. It's this pattern from my whole life of just like, I, if I'm, if I'm in a moment and I, th- I know, I, I know there's something I need to be doing or like, there's something I'm going to get to that's, or I'm being held up from getting to that thing. I just have like, I can sense this like feeling of anxiety, like that is just buzzing in my body. And, uh, it really just distracts me from being able to be super present um and it's like there's something in my new year that is taking it a step beyond just like i've been very aware of this lately um in moments that i think historically i wasn't aware of it i just was like uncomfortably anxious and now i'm like okay i'm seeing i'm like i'm like anxious to i gotta get to something but what do i have to get to what's next um so there's some action step that I want to take there, which I don't know what, what it is yet, but, um, moving from like, I was oblivious to it, just feeling the anxiety to now I'm, I'm, I'm more aware of it. And then the next thing I'd like to do is, I don't know, some action step to sort of 
help move me out of that and be like, okay, like I'm going to put that anxiety just sort of on the shelf for the moment Mm -hmm. and I'm going to enjoy this. And it happened, it actually happened today in the gym. Uh, I arrived with my daughter, um, Joey, who's out of school this week or out of daycare, preschool, excuse me. And my wife was going to come here at 930 and she was going to pick up Joey and they were going to spend the, you know, most of the day together. And I was going to train and work and just be here at the gym. This is going to be my day to get a lot done. And Joey is, and we're playing and, you know, but I'm like, okay, at 930, like day's going to get started. I'm going to get to work and things are going to get going. And like, okay, it's 930. Joey's playing with the cones. This is fun. And this is super cute, but it's 930 and Meg's not here. And I got to get to work and okay. And I'm like, and just 20 you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes goes by, 25 minutes goes by. And I'm like, not doing the thing I'm going to supposed to do. I'm like, there's this, there's this day that's got to get going. But I'm like, <laughs> you know, what's the consequence if it doesn't start at 930, if it starts at 10 instead? And what's happening in that 30 minutes that I'm not connected to right now that I'm missing out on that I'm not present as present for as I could be. Um, and it was just a, you know, it was a, very recent example happened just a few hours ago. Uh, so anyway, that's where I'm going to be working. Yeah. I've been listening to a lot of Esther Perel lately. Mm-hmm. And she always says this thing about like, how can we add a new story to like change yeah. how you look at things? And that might be relevant for some people who are starting new year's fitness, nutrition practices as well. And I wanted to ask you because you're a gym guy, you've run gyms, many gyms, You've run nutrition challenges. You've seen a lot of people go through the journey of starting off the new year with a renewed interest in fitness and nutrition and health. What are the things that you see in people where you're like, that person's totally going to crush this year or that person might be getting into trouble from what Hmm. you can tell in that initial phase? Yeah, um, I think it's like, I mean, it's kind of where I'm at right now with what I just shared. It's it's somebody who's curious. There's like a curiosity about like if what happened, what would happen, what will happen if I do this? How could things be better? Yeah. As opposed to like a desperation and a fear of like, yeah. oh, my God, if I don't do this, I'm fucked. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you cultivate that curiosity you know, versus just being like a victim to like this fear and this anxiety and this, you know, other, other energy. Somebody who comes to the nutrition challenge, like, I'm excited. I want to see what I can do. I want to see what I'm, you know, capable of. I'm like, I want to learn about this new thing about, you know, how to count macros or I like, versus like, oh my gosh, like I need to lose these 30 pounds. Like Mm -hmm. I am just really like, not doing well like if i don't do this like they're going down the if i don't like list of consequences um versus the person's like yeah i'm so curious like i heard if you did this like you feel this way like if you do this you might get there and like that's an excitement factor each person in either camp is going to have their obstacles but it's like i'm choosing to do this because i'm curious about what could be on the other side of it versus I need to do this. Otherwise, like my life sucks or I'm in a bad situation and I'm, I'm a shit person. And, um, yeah, I think that, 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 those, that kind of is like a very clear line and, and you might be the person that's in the, if I don't do this, like I'm going to, you know, things are going to be even worse. And I'm like, you're in that fear state and how do you rewrite you know, how do you rewrite that story? How do you get connected to like the curiosity, the optimism, the what could happen, what's out there, what's, um, and I don't, I don't have the answers to that, but that's, that's definitely, that's like this big missing link for a lot of individuals as they're getting ready to embark on something new. Did you show up out of fear of, if you don't do this, it's, you're at, you're at your end, or did you show up being like, Hey, things aren't great right now, but I'm good. I'm okay. I just want to be better. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you could be the most unhealthy person 
and show up with a positive, optimistic, like, I'm good. I just want to be better. Or you could be really focused on all the those negative attributes and qualities that you bringing to the start of something new. Mm -hmm. I love that you said optimism there. And I think that really encapsulates a lot of what I see in people who I think have become really, really consistent is that they have found that way to make it a positive experience for themselves. And I think that a lot of people look at training, unfortunately, and this makes me sad to see as something that is always a bummer like it's oh I hate exercise like it hurts it's hard like I don't enjoy it I just do it because I feel like I have to or like that's the only way I'm gonna like lose weight or you know something like that Mm -hmm. and I wish that we could collectively share more of how fun training can be and how it doesn't have to feel punishing and you yeah. don't have to do it like everybody else. You can really make it your own and, and find that way to make it something that's enjoyable enough to really make it part of who you are instead mm-hmm. of this thing that you have to do because of the fear or because of the negative consequence. Yeah. I, I, um, I'm going to share a story of that actually came up yesterday during some, um, filming with Nate, which was, uh, it was like the last thing that we talked about as we wrapped up the session um, where I just like, I finished a workout and I was just like, I was just kind of on high. Like that was just so great. What a great work. You know, it's like as a fitness, somebody who's like a coach who writes workouts for people, it's like, I finish a workout like that. I just want to get in front of thousands of people be like, this was the greatest workout of my life. <laughs> you have to come do this with me. I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling the vibes, like uh-huh. the good vibes. And um, what I then started to like unpack was that, you know, I fell in love with training when I was in my teenage years. And I just loved going to the gym. And like, I, I learned that you could like work out with purpose, with like a plan and like you could get better and you didn't have to like, you know, you leave feeling good and still come back the next day and be better. You know, you didn't have to like leave feeling like you just killed yourself in order to get better. Mm -hmm. There was this like positive feedback loop thing that could happen. And I found that with weights. I found that with, you know, doing stuff in the gym. But if you find that doing dance, if you find that doing something else that's movement related, then that's, that's magic. Right. And, um, Fast forward a number of years, that's when like CrossFit came into my life and hey, this was interesting. It was like kind of the same thing I was into. I was into training, but now we like sort of shifted gears to we're not just training. We're like learning how to go to the gym and suffer better than other people. That was kind of the right. was kind of the culture. Yeah. But then it certainly became not just the culture of the of the method, but the culture of the sport. And not just the culture of the sport, but like the, what was required of the sport. Like you had to be the, the, as Lance Armstrong calls himself sometimes, the chief suffer officer. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You had to be the, the CSO. You had to suffer more than (laughs) every single person, you know, and have strength and stamina and skill, but you just had to suffer. So I spent, you know, a number of years like continuing to train, but like, layering it always with like suffering and pain and these workouts are like hard and um and when i kind of was able to sort of say okay i i retire from that as my focus kind of lifted the this fog of like it's not about going in and just suffering it's about going in and training and enjoying it and having fun and you work hard but then you recover and you just it's this positive feedback loop and it can be really magical Mm -hmm. and that is, uh, you're right. That is something that is, I think, missing. That narrative is missing for a lot of people. It's like, oh, this is going to be hard. I got to go and like, I got to get, I got to suffer through mm-hmm. this. I got to, I got to wake up early. I got to get the shoes on. I got to go in the cold. Like, ah, oh, this sucks. Yeah. And if, if you're, if any of these things that you resolve to change in your life start out that way, I, you're going to have a hard time getting there. You know, you're going to have a hard time making, making any strides and building consistency. Um, you know, build the consistency by finding something that feels positive. And then, yeah, there will be a time down the road where, you know, 
hardship and struggle and suffering is something that you actually want. You're like, I'm ready to push myself. Like, I'm good. I want to go. I want to go there. And the reason you will want to go there at that point is because there's another level of growth that can happen with that. But it's like, that's not, that, that can't be the first one. You know, if you're not ready for it, if you haven't prepared and suffering's the first thing on your list, you're washing out of boot camp. Trust me. You're mm-hmm. the person that's ringing the bell. <laughs> Like, I'm done. I'm cool. I didn't want this that bad, you know? And so don't, you know, you don't have to feel like that's the only path to success. You don't have to suffer on day one. You can find something that feels really good and and manageable and attainable and build consistency and build confidence. And then over time, like, you're loving it. And that's that's what I think we're doing with functional bodybuilding training. I I think it's. But. 100%. uh, Yeah. But that's by no means you ha- you don't have to do it in order to be successful. It's just an option for you all. Yeah. And I think it's important to note that you're not going to love every single workout that you do. There are going to be days that are going to feel harder than others. But I don't know what the magic number is, but there should be a certain amount where you get that feeling where you finish your session and you're like, damn, that was awesome. I love that. Yeah. Fired up. Yes. Yeah. Three out of five a, a week. Yeah, I'm into that. <laughs> Be in the 60% range. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, well, any other closing thoughts as we wrap up this talk of uh, New Year, New You? Uh, I think last closing thought is that New Year's is a date. Hmm. And if all else fails and you encounter obstacles, just make a new date. Just go for the next quarter, go for the next month, go for your birthday. Just, you can always start over. Hell yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. My my wedding anniversary is um, 16 days after the start of the new year. Nice. So if all goes to hell in the first two weeks, <laughs> I'm starting anniversary, on anniversary. Anniversary, baby. It's baby, my anniversary. anniversary. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> right. All right. Well, uh, we'll see you all in the next episode. And... Um, yeah, drop us some DMs. I think we're 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 we've been lacking on some quality DM questions from y'all. Mm-hmm. Get into the gram, tell yep. us what you want to hear about, and be paying attention for the next AMA so that we can take some of your questions and bring them back to the podcast. Absolutely. Take care. Bye. Bye.